Let's get on our boar. Head to the forest of myth. Do, 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 do. Oh, I don't know why I went up there. It's not even up here. It's down here. Interesting houses. I like it. Oh my god, it's the great Dooku tree. It sure is quiet here. Such silence bodes ill. There's trouble on the way. I'm certain of it. You know, a little optimism now and then wouldn't hurt, Vice. Such cheek. Vice's voice rose in a quizzical way. It is not quizzical. What's going oh, on? Oh, somebody's narrating it. That's what the dream was too, is like a narration. Villager's body shuddered as he slowly opened his eyes. Perhaps we should start by asking this man. Uh, who are you? We heard something happened to this village, so we came to see if we could help. The mayor stared at Thaz and Wise. If you can speak to me, I must have caught you in my dream. In your dream? The mayor explained. The past weeks, a mysterious disease called the Death Dream spread across the forest of the myth. Those who caught it were cursed to fall asleep and live forever within the world of their own dreams. This, The village mayor had determined the Death Dream was spread from person to person by spoken words, but before he could learn more, the disease took him as well. Vice started, or stared at the mayor, his mouth twitching slightly. Now see here. He Are you said, saying that we have been absorbed into your dream? Well, yes. I think you have. In other words, we've caught the death dream? Before the mayor could confirm that's a suspicion, Vice exploded with rage. Ridiculous. Preposterous. Completely unfathomable on every conceivable level. It's pretty cool. I don't even recall falling asleep. That's just how the death dream works. Though polite, the mayor was clearly trying to brush aside the book's remarks. My remarks are not to be brushed aside, fool. The mayor twisted his mouth into an embarrassed grimace, then quickly changed the subject to who Thass had seen and what they had discussed since coming to the village. Something there must have caused you to enter my I mean, dream. the only person we talked to is you. Conversation. A specific word. Something. Thass and Wise racked their brains, but could find no easy solutions. There were simply too many words to consider, too much random chatter, too many meaningless conversations. Does not in meaningless I like how he rolled his R. The mere suggestion that Weiss could chose his words carelessly seemed to sting his pride. It does not seem to sting my pride, you bloated gas bag of a narrator. It has demolished it utterly. Irritated, Weiss looked skyward as if searching for answers in the heavens. I was doing no such thing. Just leave me alone already. The anger created by his harsh words bled over to Thass like a contagion. <laughs> Wait, said Thass suddenly. Did someone just say contagion? Yes, I believe so. What of it? Well, that villager told us to watch out for contagious words, right? The mayor le leaned forward with a renewed interest, pushing a startled Weiss aside in the process. Was it said something, right? Asked the mayor. Some specific combination of words. What was it? It's about dreaming or something that dreams, or what the hell was it? A sheep, cried Vice suddenly, blurting out the first thing that popped into his head. The others stared at him for a moment before slowly shaking their heads. After a few more minutes of thought, that's his face suddenly lit up. 
I remember, he said. Those who dream. That's what he said. I'm sure of it. At this, the mayor produced a thick sheaf of papers from his pocket. He flipped through them a few times and were finally nodding his approval at that. That sounds right, he said, as a stray sheet of paper floated to the ground. My notes also mentioned something about that, but it was the last thing you heard before you fell asleep. The mayor shook his head, his worn pencil stub tracing lines across the lone piece of paper. For the last month, I've done nothing but study the disease we call the death dream, he said. I mean, I'm the mayor, right? It's my job to protect the people from whatever comes along. But I never expected a couple outsiders to start entering people's dreams. The mayor paused, grimace crossing his face. I should probably be taking notes or something. The wise immediately fired back. I applaud the force of will it takes to research the disease in your dreams, he said. But perhaps we should bend your efforts to escaping this place instead of trying to understand it. The mayor's hand tightened around his pencil, snapping off the tip. I've tried to escape. From the very moment I realized I was locked inside my own dream, I've been looking for a way out, but I don't think it exists. I mean, this is my dream, right? If there isn't an exit, I don't know about it. He paused for a moment, his unfocused eyes staring at nothing. My village, is, my village is beautiful, he said to no one in particular, and it was filled with the most wonderful people you could ever hope to meet. But once the disease took hold, things changed. It looks... It's like someone took a sponge and sucked all the color out of their lives. I just want us to be whole again. I want us to be free. And I won't stop trying until it happens. That's not an agreement. Huh? Wait a second, I did not. Look, if you can... If we can help, be of any help to that, just ask. Now hold on, I did not say that. Silence, called, cried Weiss. The Grimoire looked from the ass of the mayor and back again, his face filling with confidence. Grimoire, Weiss's face is always confident. Thank you very much. Now see here, mayor, you told us that nothing can exist in this dream world without you knowing it. But yet you seemed surprised to see us when we first arrived, yes? The mayor slowly raised his head, realization drawing, da dawning on his face. Oh my god, he said, you're right, you're right. I had no idea you were coming. The human imagination is a limitless engine, said Weiss, and dreams are the fuel. If you can imagine an exit, then it must be so. With your permission, we shall search it out. Thank you, said the mayor. I don't know how I can repay you. Payment is not required. We are as eager as you to be done with this place. The mayor suddenly felt as if he could breathe again. He almost forgot what it was like. Good luck, you two. He called to the departing forms of Aston Weiss. We're all counting on you. As that slowly faded into the misty forest, the mayor was struck by a sense of deja vu. I saw this man once before, he thought. But where? That, that's his mood darkened as he trudged through the forest. Hours earlier, when the beauty of the place was still in theme, a new thing, he'd been confident they could get in, find the exit, and be home in time for dinner. But the deeper they went, the more the forest closed in around him. The mist made it difficult to see more than a foot in any direction, and moss-covered rocks seemed determined to twist his ankle. More than once, he'd been forced to steady himself in the rock bark or the rough bark of a tree, and his hands now left small trails of blood on everything he touched. Additionally, Weiss was proving to be a spectacularly poor traveling companion. Unhindered by either terrain or physical effort, he spent most of his time urging Thas to pick up the pace and grumbling about their slow progress. Finally, after Weiss muttered something about legless turtles being more adept at navigating the environment, Thas snapped. Okay, Weiss, cram it for a second, would you? You don't have to walk. Thas leaned against a tree and tried to stretch the knots from his back. How can this stupid forest be so big, he muttered to himself. The moment the words tumbled from his mouth, a cacophony of insects sprang to life. Every imaginable form of buzz, click, and hiss roared out at the volume that rattled his teeth. Thas slapped his hands over his ears and screamed to be heard. Weiss, what's going on? Thas could see Weiss's mouth moving, but he might as well have been shouting into a tornado. The insects screamed, the forest howled, and then, just as Thas's ears seemed ready to tear from his head and go running for cover, the sound diminished. Hesitantly, he removed the hand from his left ear and listened to the creatures of the woods. Zri, zri, zri. Shuck a shuck a shuck. Sure, I'm not saying all that. As the insect symphony <clears throat> dimmed another decibel, Thas began to detect patterns in the sound. This isn't random, he thought. It's not just white noise, it's something else. The insects weren't just calling out, they were asking a question. One with it is lacking, two with it is ideal, three with it is dangerous. What is it? By my pages, is this a riddle? I guess so. I mean, it feels sort of forced, but maybe it's the key to getting out of this place. And I leave it to you to answer. Um, one with it is lacking, two with it is ideal, three with it is dangerous. Uh, secret. 
I'm really furious that Wise left the task to him. That side and gave the only answer that made sense. It's a secret, uh, right? The sound of the insect stopped and suddenly began. The forest undergrowth parted before it passed like a rippling wave, opening a new path. These forest arthropods are making a road for us, said Wise with glee. Please that passing the test. That's moved on with new intensity. Path offered his body relief from the undergrowth, but gave even greater cheer to his mind. As long as they were on a path, their journey had a purpose. Guess the force has accepted us, huh? Said Vass after a bit. Weiss spun around to face his companion. Do not mistake the will of this force some happy pet you can suddenly befriend. We have no idea where the path leads. As Weiss finished speaking, the pair turned a corner and found themselves facing a clear forest spring. Smiling, the ass picked up a small rock and sent it skipping across the surface of the water. Good heaven, said Weiss. His surprise was understandable. Each time the rock struck the surface of the water, a musical note rang out. The rock finally stopped moving and sank to the bottom of the spring. The ripples left behind came together to form words. I enter through the window, but break no glass. When night falls, I vanish. What am I? Certainly easy, barked Weiss. Now answer it. That's great as treat try not to reach out and strangle his companion. He's right, after all. This one is pretty easy. Um, sunlight. A plume of water suddenly burst from the spring. Sunlit the sunlight filtered through the trees and reflected off the plume, creating a shimmering rainbow that spanned the entire horizon. In all my years, said Weiss softly, I've never seen such a sight. Perhaps I've misunderstood the intentions of this place. Hey, look, cried Vass, asking Weiss from his days. There's a house or something over there. Glancing in the direction of his friend's extended hand, Weiss saw a small cottage nestled among the trees. That's weird, isn't it, Weiss? I mean, who would be able to build the house all the way out here? This is an interesting um, section of the game. Vass walked over and pounded on, the, pounded on the door. After a minute of solid banging, the door cracked open and a small man peered out. His body was cloaked from neck to toe in a large cape, while his face was obscured by mist. Um, began Thass. But before he could get out any further, the cloaked man held up a hand and began speaking. I have four legs in the morning, and two at noon. But end the night with three. What am I? Thass tried to ask the cloaked man who he was and what he was doing there, but he simply repeated the question. We wish to engage this man in conversation, said Weiss. It seems we must answer this riddle. Yeah, I suppose. Well, at least it's an easy one. I have four legs in the morning, two at noon, but end the night with three. What am I? Um, a man. The mist dissolved from the cloaked figure as he spoke a single word. Correct. With that, the man flung his garment aside, revealing his true identity. Y You're the mayor, cried Thass. A small man slowly shook his head. I'm not the mayor you know, now listen to my words. Long ago I saw a version of you that was not yourself. Uh, sorry, what's that mean? It will make sense in time. At present, I simply congratulate you on cracking the seal of the death dream. Now you must go to the person at the forced entrance. With that, the man turned on his heel and slammed the door behind him. As Thass watched, mist seeped up from the ground and enveloped the cottage, erasing it from existence. With Thass and Weiss returned to the forced entrance, they found the mayor leaning against a tree. As soon as he caught sight of the duo, he sprang to his feet and scrambled over to them. Good gravy, he cried. You made it. You actually made it back. His left hand grasped the asses and pumped it so fiercely it threatened to dislodge from the socket, while his light, right sight blah, while his right seized Weiss with a cover and swung him through the air. Gah, by the heavens, stop shaking me, fool. We have not even told you if we were successful or not. The mayor smiled broadly and shook his head. I'm just happy you're alive. I didn't think I'd ever see you again. That's what drew himself from the mayor's eager handshake with a slight smile. We broke the death dream seal, he said. At least I think we did. The mayor's face beamed, and Thass filled him with, it filled, it filled him in on the details. When the tale was done, the three of them lay down on the forest ground and fell asleep. Thass cocked his head. Okay, hang on a second. This is crazy. Why would we just lay down and go to sleep? Cease your endless prattle and go to sleep, fool. Fighting against the rules of this place is futility itself. Thass, the mayor, obediently reclined atop the grassy earth. Have you forgotten, continued Weiss, it is words that control the death dream, words that allow us to move from place to place. No matter how unnatural they seem, the words are absolute. Therefore, if the words tell us to sleep, then sleep we shall. And once we do, the story will continue. With that, the trio found their eyes growing heavy, their breath breast slowing. This is the first time, began the mayor, the first time I felt tired since I was imprisoned here. His words were cut off by a loud, long yawn and remembering nothing more. They might have slept for an hour or a year. When they woke, things had a slightly more real quality to them. The mist felt thicker, the leaves greener. It was clear that they had awakened from their dream. That shook the mayor's shoulders gently. Good news, he said. I think we made it. Oh, wow, said the mayor in an odd voice. We did. I'm back. He blinked once and then again, as if not quite believing the sight before him. 
You two have no idea how much this means. But that dream was spreading through our village, and I wanted to, well, I thought I could figure out how to stop it, but I guess that wasn't the case. I must have caught the disease and became trapped in my own dream. The mayor started to stand and collapsed back to earth. He stared at his legs and tried to remember how they worked. Then glanced at that and shrugged. Without a word, the young man reached down and pulled the mayor to his feet. Real life may take some getting used to, said the mayor as a wry smile crossed his lips. You shall relearn in short order, I am sure, said Weiss. For now, you should return to your home and rest. No, said the mayor, swaying on the unsteady feet. No, I can't. Some of the villagers are still trapped in the death dream. I have to save them. The mayor slowly made his way to the divine tree in the center of the village. Then bowed his head and prayed silently. This is a holy tree, he explained when the prayer was finished. The guardian of our village's history and memories. Superstition will only make our mission harder, muttered Weiss. We should not put our faith in the gods. The mayor shook his head, not the gods, the words. The legend says that our tree is home to a powerful magic known as the sealed verse. The and Weiss could not contain their surprise. It seemed a goal had been found in the most unexpected of places. I say, muttered Weiss, this is certainly a stroke of luck. As the three men said their goodbyes, Thass mentioned the, str the strange man who would give them the third riddle and the mysterious words he left them with. I once saw a version of you that was not yourself, muttered the mayor. What in the world does that mean? Lawson thought he stared into space for a long time. You know, he said softly, this is going to sound odd, but I had a feeling I'd seen you before, too. Thass tried to keep a straight face and failed, but the mayor didn't seem to notice. Deja vu, right? Anyway, I figure it's some kind of illusion created by the death dream. It probably doesn't mean anything. <clears> Thass <throat> gave the mayor a nod and a smile, but inwardly his thoughts were racing. There's something wrong with wrong about the mayor and his words. And what exactly is going on here? That riddle would prove to be the most difficult one of all. Oh, thank you so much. Now I can finally return to a normal it's a lot of life. reading. This is one of the most bizarre diseases I have ever encountered. Very cool, though. I know. That's why we have to help the other villagers, no matter what. Hey, dark execution. Summon magical spikes on the ground to impel enemies. Oh, you know what? I think I saw that in the, the tutorial. Yeah. For a sealed verse, that didn't take much effort. Yes, all a touch too easy, if you ask me. It's almost as if someone was guiding us to this village. Don't overthink advice. Alright, I mean, are these all gonna give me, like, scenarios? This person must be dreaming too. It would appear that way, yes. Um, alright, let's do it. I can't say I'm very excited to go back there. That dream world sort of creeps me out. Perhaps you should spend less time complaining and more time getting on with the Hopefully it's shorter. Yeah, yeah. I breathe air sending with death and resist the urge to laugh, for I know it will sound like the words of a madman. How long have I been in this fresh hell? My box, my prison, is tucked beneath the stairway in the long unused catacombs of some infinite castle. Outside, I hear the sounds of a funeral dirge that plays without end. Light has no place here. Wind has forgotten friend. I pray for death to come, but he forsakes me. Time passes. An attorney slips by in a single take of the clock. Someone knocks on my prison. Anyone there? I hear an unfamiliar voice say, My savior. I clawed the door of my jail, embedding thick splinters under my ragged nails. I scream for help. I laugh. I sob. Surely this is the product of my idled mind. Surely it cannot be true. Help me, I cry. For the love of all gods, help me. Possibly, I hear the sound of a lock being torn out and falling to the floor. The door slowly creaks open. I have just enough time to see a silver-haired boy in a floating book before the light pours inside. My eyes, accustomed to blackness, explode with pain, and I am forced to turn away. Who are you? I ask, shaking hands, covering my face. How have you come to this place? I'm Grimoire Weiss. This is Thass. Long have we been searching for you. Now come, stand. We shall awaken you from this nightmare together. The one known as Thass extends his hand and pulls me from the cell. Though my eyes are slow to adjust to freedom, my ears are keen as ever, and they recognize the staccato sounds of heavy rain. I never thought to hear that again, I whisper. Would this... Would that this were not such a terrible storm look at your feet i force my eyes open and see water pooling around my ankles and lapping at my shins there's so much of it yes and more comes each moment we delay if we do not make good of our escape we shall be all drowned in this castle we know you are weak but you are only our only hope to survive this place time 
The long forgotten friend made itself known again. I nodded my head and swore to save my rescuers no matter the cost. The castle catacombs are a maze, twisting upon themselves at the endless entrails of a giant. I squint down in the dim corridors and proceed north. So let me skip this. Wait, am I supposed to walk north? Oh, I had to click it. Okay. At the end of the corridor, I find a row of 20 gorgeous canopied beds resting atop a carpet of velvet. All are covered in a thick layer of dust and cobwebs. Turning for the door of the next room, I come upon a shapeless mass of gray matter. It's been shoved against the side of this wall, and despite my fever, I think I see the outlines of a door just beyond. When I reach out a finger and touch a piece of the mass, it turns out it turns to dust and drifts away in the wind. Realization slowly dawns, and I fall to my knees and weep. Corpses. I face them out in charting, crumbling corpses. I took it from the beds and back again until the horror dawns upon, full upon me. Someone has piled these bodies onto a tower and set them ablaze. Whether they were alive or dead, I do not know. Insanity will not permit me to consider the proposition further. I make a sound, whether scream or laughter, I cannot be certain. Then my mind grants me merciful blackness. I find myself opening the door and leaving the most terrible of rooms. I squint down the dim corridors. Well, we're not going to go south, because we just went north, so go east. Um, go north. North. At the end of the path, the waters rise to my waist, exhaust me both physically and spiritually. I pray that this is the way out. Eventually, I can stand the side of the water no longer, so and so turn my eyes upward. Imagine my surprise when I see a series of paintings hanging the faded plaster wall. Each depicts a person in the prime of life, clad in clothing of the highest quality. The styles, however, are strange to me, leading me to believe that these people lived, had lived long, long ago. Much of this was an outfit that particularly catches my eye. It is constructed of a thin, breezy cloth and de decorated with a motif of flowers and birds, while encircling the figure's waist is a leather belt of the most perfect construction. It is stunning costume even by modern standards. As I gaze at the portrait, I am struck by a desire to touch it with my own hands. Yet, as I extend a single finger of the painting, I am gripped by a most unpleasant feeling. Staring close at the image, I see it bend and warp into a shape of another figure. Something behind the picture is pointing at me. Is it another prisoner? A fellow inmate trapped for eternity in this place? I cannot let it pass, and so I seize the portrait with both hands and throw it into the water. The wall is hollow behind the painting, and inside I can just make out a body. Whether or not this is a prisoner, there would be no rescue. The poor soul is long dead. Scraps of clothing lie on the floor around the bones. Only a small amount of the fabric has survived. But it features the same delicate designs that were depicted in the portrait. I've been admiring a row of corpses blocked from the view of portraits of each victim at their pinnacle. Enough. Shielding my eyes, I paddle forward through the water. I squint down the dim corridors and proceed south. Uh, east. I find myself in a great wall that only stands a rain cup for comfort. The waterlogged red carpet squishes beneath my feet as I approach the center of the room. Once there, I behold a beautiful dining table upon which rests china and silver of the finest construction as well as the remains of the fantastic feast. As my eyes continue to adjust, I see many chairs surrounding the table, each holding the dinner guest. Noticing movement, I approach the chair at the table's head, but as the truth of the matter dawns on me, I recoil in horror. The host of the feast is a corpse, as are all the invited guests. An army of foul reeling insects have made a home in their remains, and this is the movement I saw. This one splendid feast was nothing more than a requiem of the damned. I took a moment to steady my shaking hands, then slowly back away from the table. Desperate to lose the sight of the abomination before me, my gaze lands on the chairs upon which the dead were seated. This is, un this is a mistake, for the chairs have proved to be even more terrible than the feast itself. Each one is covered in layer of spikes that run from the seat up the back and down the arms. This explains the color of the carpet beneath my feet. I can only pray that the unfortunate diners were dead when the meal began. Before if not, it is a simple task to envision the agonized screams that must have sprung forth from their mouths. My mind grasped frantically at the possibility that these souls committed some terrible crime for which this was the punishment. Though in truth, I suspect they had committed no crime at all. There would be no tomorrow for these unfortunates. This war was their last supper. I squint down the, the dim corridors and proceed north. It's all hope we make it to the front door. Break it down, someone cries, so I give myself the effort. In tandem with Az and Grimoire Weiss, I slam my body against a thick, sturdy door. The third try gives way, and we find ourselves sprawling on the ground outside the castle. The storm is in retreat. The clouds above are still darker for boating. But to the west, I can see a thin shimmer of sunlight trying to break through. How can I thank you? I cry in tears of joy. 
enjoying the rain on my cheeks. I would surely have died in there. Looking down, I suddenly notice that my dress is in tatters, and I sheepishly try to cover my exposed skin. Your dress, asks wise. Then you are a woman, madam. I am. I, prof I proffer the to you smile. I suppose that comes as something as a surprise, seeing as how I exist only in the form of words. I can see that the one known as Thaz is disappointed that the torn dress will be given no further description. But he hides it well. But not in a shrug, the three of us set it forth on our awakening. He wanted to see some titty. But beyond us, an awakening of another kind is taking place. Black smoke fills the abandoned castle, providing the countless damned souls inside with their final shroud. After a moment, the castle's windows shatter with a mighty roar. A fresh breeze blows through the hallways and corridors, clearing the smoke away for good. As we watch in awe, unaccountable black shadow, shadows slowly flicker to life, crossing to and fro in front of the broken windows. The castle's dead have awakened to the new life as shades. You have anything to say about that? Uh, hopefully there will be no labyrinth next time. I hear that. That's pretty long too. But hey, lady, you're welcome. Thank you so much for saving me. I of course. never want to have a dream like that again. All right, looks like there's only three people here, so I guess we'll do this one too. And another victim. This work certainly is trying. I figured a book like you would be into all this word stuff, Vice. Even I have my exceptions. Not Colony of massive sculptures visible in the distance, their tall forms scraping against the sky. Why isn't that? I've never seen such a sight, and their eyes widen as they try to take it in. Those buildings must be huge. Oh my god, thank god they're talking a little bit. What do you think, Vice? As Vice considered his answer, the sun beat down on them with renewed ferocity. Perhaps they are some manner of mirage. He said. Damn it, under this heat a mirage or two would hardly be an expected sight. That's not enough to sweat off his brow, leaving a trail of sand in his place. He thought he never had spent so thirsty. The ancient road on which they walked was black and cracked with age. Here and there, the thin wisp of grass pushed up the rocky surface, as if to find those who had laid this material down over their home. The heat reflecting from the road made the vast light headed. His feet hurting, and he crouched down to rest. I don't know how much longer I can do this. Is someone playing a joke on us or what? The complaining had already begun. Vice tried not to let his eyes roll too much. A joke, he said. No, no joke. This road leads to the city of art. Perhaps the path itself is simple, simply some matter of grand artistic work. You don't sound very sure of yourself there. Perhaps not, but thinking of it was this way might make it easier for you to bear. Das glanced at Weiss's grim, grinning face, shook his head, and resumed walking. As time passed, Das's das feet grew more painful, and his throat drier than he thought impossible. He tried not to look further than the exit step ahead, because the bright sunlight made him hesitant to trust his own senses. We are definitely getting closer, said Weiss, in an effort to cheer his companion. Yes, this much is certain. Encouraged, Das lifted his gaze. Suddenly, he stopped walking, choosing instead to stand in the middle of the road, with his mouth and eyes wide open and his finger pointing in the distance. Water, he cried, it's water. Water, asked Wise. Preposterous, I don't see any water. Over there, just ahead of us, look, the sun is reflecting off of it. Without waiting for a response, Thas sprang to life and bounded toward the sight. What in the... There was no water. There was nothing but sand in every direction. Thas closed his eyes and sighed as Wise floated up behind him and chuckled softly. I believe this is known as a mirage, he said. Many a desert traveler has spoken of such themes. Thas shook his head bewildered. Suddenly he pointed off in the distance, his eyes wide open once more. Wait, there it is. I just missed it. Look, it's right there. Thas ripped it off again, leaving Weiss with no choice but to follow. After a few minutes of running, Thas came to a halt. I could have sworn it was right around here. Confused, he put his hands up to his eyes and rubbed them vigorously. As soon as he stopped, he noticed a blue, shimmering pool of clear water just over the next rise. With a shout, he bounded off in search of it. The chase continued for nearly an hour until an exasperated Weiss finally floated up to Thas and struck him in the face with his cover. Enough, you blithering idiot. Stop this at once. There is no water here. That's his face clouded. There isn't? There is not, and perhaps the next time you will listen to me when I tell you as much. Wise paused for a moment, then continued speaking in a slightly kinder tone. However, I suppose this mad chase will not altogether waste it. It seems we have arrived in the city of art. Vass looked up, stretched out before him, he saw was a rope, impossibly tall sculptures. Their journey was at an end. They're huge, cried Das, completely forgetting the heat and pain of the past few hours. I've never seen anything so big. Each sculpture was formed from roughly the same shape, a tall rectangle that stretched up toward the sky. But that is where the similarities ended. Most were covered with panes of glass that reflected light in a thousand directions. 
while others seemed to be nothing but frames of steel. Some had tall spires in their tops, while others possessed triangular caps. What kind of city is this, it asks. Where are the people? Where are the houses? Perhaps the land is intended exclusively for artistic use. The debate continued as they made their way through the city. Miracles of artistry were everywhere. Great iron crates with wheels set silent on steel rails. Beautifully carved works with the lights of red, amber, and green dangled over every street. As they moved away from the massive sculptures, they found a great array of smaller ones. Some were covered in glass or brick, but many were composed of materials they had never seen before, or had never before encountered. The sheer variety of colors and styles was staggering. Unable to find a theme or purpose to the abstract works around them, Thast and Weiss eventually fell silent. On the outskirts of the city, they discovered three sculptures in the shape of humans. Thast uttered a sigh of relief as he approached them. Finally, I was getting tired of modern art. Three statues were indistinguishably except for a single word chiseled into their right arms. One read Alpha, one read Beta, and the final one read Gamma. As Das moved to touch the nearest statue, a bird flew from the top of the sculptures. All lighting on the statue's shoulder, it made it a brief but beautiful song that took the form of words. Only one form is real, the others are false. The real form will always speak the truth. The false ones will only speak lies. With that, the bird departed. As if on cue, the three statues shuddered to life, acquiring color and form as they began to breathe. Hey, look at that, said Thass, they're alive. The triplets bowed low before Thass. Please, said Alpha, you have to get me out of this nightmare. I am real. Stop lying, said Beta. He turned to Thass and threw his hands in the air. Alpha's a fake. You know I'm the real one. What a load of crap, said Gamma. Beta's fake. Everyone knows I'm the only real one around here. The respected pleas given the three statues returned to the frozen state as silence once again enveloped the city. When you consider all the statements, only one of them can be real theme, said Weiss. Thass furrowed his eyebrows and considered the answer. Only one form is real, the others are false. The real form will always speak the truth. The false one will only speak lies. I mean, I honestly have no idea because they all said the same fucking thing. I don't have a clue. Thass took a long look at the statues and tried to clear his mind. On the outskirts of the city, they discovered three sculptures in the shape of humans. Wait, what? Oh, I guess I was wrong. Okay. Um. Fuck it. I guess Alpha? The real one is Alpha. The eyes of the statue shone with an eerie light. The light grew stronger and stronger until the Aston Weiss were forced to turn away. Uh, I guess that was it. That one was short. It would seem we failed. Ah, shit. Yeah. We'd best act more. Well. Hi. How am I supposed to know which one it is, though? Alright, well, we're gonna skip all this because we already did all this. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, nice. I can just hold it. That's faster. Alright. Um, I guess we'll just go in order. So let me try... Beta. So that's his voice betrayed a notable lack of confidence. He was relieved to see Weiss nodding at him. If Alpha were telling the truth, began Weiss in the dry tone of lecturer, Beta and Gamma would be fakes. But in that case, Gamma's claimed that Beta is a fake. Oh, there's a riddle. Beta and Gamma would be fakes. But in that case, Gamma's claim that Beta is a fake would be the truth. Even though Gamma is the liar, therefore, that theory crumbles. Now let's presume that Gamma spoke the truth. That makes Alpha and Beta liars. In this situation, however, Beta is calling Alpha a liar, which would leave us with two statues telling the truth. What? Finally, let's assume that Beta is telling the truth. If so, Alpha and Gamma's lies would make sense, therefore Beta must be real. So as finished his explanation, Alpha and Gamma crumbled soundlessly into dust, while Beta sprang to life once more. Congratulations, villagers, said Weiss in a cheerful voice. The time is to awaken has arrived. Thank you for saving me, cried the villager. He dropped to his knees and bowed his head as low as it could go before an uncomfortable fast pulled him to his feet. Why did you have to dream like this, asked Weiss. Have you been to the city before? The villager slowly looked around, the bizarre object and sculptures that dotted the landscape, then shook his head. I, I don't think so. 
I mean, it's impossible, right? There's no way I could have ever been to a place like this. But at the same time, I feel like I've seen it before. Deja vu, Mayor Thass, just like the mayor. Thanks sense of unease that struck Thass during the mayor's dream spread once more through his mind. Uh, that was rough. I am positive I have seen nice that short, though. before. Okay, that's enough. Don't need you getting all weird on me, too. Okay, there. Now all the villagers can wake up, right? Yes, if the mayor's assumption was correct. I think I have had enough wordplay to last a lifetime. Thank you very much. You're telling me. Anyway, let's go see the mayor. Yes, let's. Because everybody is free. Oh, how wonderful. Thank you so much. Here, I have something for you. Ooh, a present? Ooh, faith. I wonder what's better than what I have, but probably not. I can really have it? Of course. It's apparently a weapon of some renown, but we have little use for it. Well, we appreciate it. Thank you again for everything. You're welcome. Alright, cool. Well, we're done here. Let's save it. You know what? I haven't leveled up in a while. Um, right, faith. Ooh, it's better and it's a very light. Fuck yeah. Ooh, so quick and fast. Thass came back. He came so back up to see me. Mention. Yay! Oh, it was truly magnificent. There are no words. Really. <laughs> Neat. Let's get back to Popola. She'll probably want to know what's going on in there. Hey. Right. Damn it. I'm gonna kill these guys before I get back on. It's gonna knock me off. Dude, hey, what'd you stop for? Popola. I saved the day once again. The death dream certainly is a strange illness. Yeah, it was something all right. Even I, with my natural love for words, have no desire to visit that place ever again. You guys did well. You've been making a lot of long trips lately. Are you sure you're not pushing yourself too hard? I'm okay. I can't just sit around all day while Yona's sick, after all. If you say so. So, anything I can do for you? Well, I suppose there is one thing I could use a hand with. Have you heard about our plans to repair the canal? No. The work probably won't happen for a while, 
But once it's done, we can use the canal for trade and travel and all kinds of useful things. Unfortunately, however, we're a bit behind schedule at the moment. If you're willing to help out, I'd really appreciate it. No problem. What do you need? Great. So, the man I originally asked to help on this project hasn't shown up for work in a few days. I'm starting to get a little worried. So, maybe you can head over to Seafront and check up on him? Seafront. the location of his house on your map. He always right. carries a red bag over his shoulder, so he should be easy enough to find. Got it. Bum, bum, bum. A canal, is it? Fascinating. If we had a ferry, we could put these days of endlessly running about behind us. Don't you just float everywhere anyway? Do you think I am borne aloft by the winds, lad? It takes stamina to maintain this height. Oh, really? You could at least try to hide the utter dismay, you know. Well, it's a good thing we're going to see for it anyways, because we have uh, two new quests over there. One with the guy with the uh, girl with the rich tastes, and uh, the postman's got something else for us. So I'm assuming it's going to be related to the old lady again. That's where we want to go. Let me go this way first. My legs still. Or maybe I have to have it. What? Maybe I have to have it actually put on through uh, De Devola. Was that her name? It has to be activated through her. No, that shouldn't be the case. Hey, I heard you can get inside facade, right? All right. Sure, but oh, perfect. Let's. There's something there that you have to get for me. My girl wants a new accessory, but it has to be made from this really rare ore that they carry in Facade's Strange Things store. So next time you're there, could you buy some for me? I think it's called Fluorite. I actually might have Please? some. I mean, oh, such affection. This man has... Man, my girl is gonna freak it. Sounds like this guy's part seems to me like... I'm afraid I don't have it. Whatever do you need? You know, this may be one of those things a magic book just can't understand. Ridiculous. There is nothing beyond my knowledge. <laughs> if you say so. Um... This guy looks like a fucking assassin creed. Hey, uh, are you the guy who's supposed to help repair the canal? Popola sent me to... Oh god, it's over. My life is over! Surely you must realize nothing good can come of being involved with this particular endeavor. Easy, Vice. Hey, so, are you alright? It's my wife. She left home a week ago and hasn't come back. I'm so worried I can't even focus on my work. Oh, my sweet dumpling, where sweet are you? Sweet dumpling? Oh, that's terrible. Would you like us to help you look for her? Really? You do that for I me? I mean, I guess. 
Sure. Um, but do you have any idea where we should start? Hmm. Well, she always used to enjoy drinking at the tavern. Nah, she's friends. a drunk. Got it. All right, then I guess we'll start with them. Thank you. This means the world to me. Oh, and by the way, my I need right. some. <laughs> Plus, blah 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 blah. Okay. Blah 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 blah. I'm willing to bet that man knows more about his wife absconding than he's letting on. Probably. Hey there, I'm uh, looking for a woman carrying a red bag. Are you now? Interesting. Did something happen to her? She hasn't been home and her husband's worried. Do you know anything about where she might be? <laughs> Trouble in paradise, is it? Oh, those two never change. Anyway, the short answer is no. She hasn't been around here either. Though come to think of it, she always got on well with the woman over at the tackle shop. Maybe you should try her? I'll do that. Thanks. Hey, sure. what's the rush? You've got a cute face. Why not sit here and join Ooh. me for a round? Or three. Don't mind if I do. Uh, sorry, ma'am, but I'm not old enough to drink. Don't be a bitch. Drink with her. Maybe you'll get lucky. Lose that V card. Hey there. That is a, a, a weird hairstyle. A red bag? Oh, sure. Although now that I think about it, I haven't seen her in a while. Last time she came around, she mentioned something about leaving town. But I figured it was just idle talk. Leaving town, huh? All right, thanks for your time. If she is truly bum, left these bum, charming bum, bum. Animals, finding her may prove most difficult indeed. I just hope she hasn't been attacked by shades or anything. Probably has. I think the only place I really haven't been on the map is um the house up there. That shade seems rather odd. It's a red bag, ah, uh, yep. Hey, look at it is identical to the red satchel carried by the man who sent us on this mad quest. Perhaps it belongs to his spouse. Oh no. I fear it lightly, lad. I sense no other Well, oh, this is terrible. However difficult it may be, we Yep. Now before we do that. Let me see if I can activate the quest through um, Devil uh, for the postman, because he didn't give me shit. Give you fur. I got a letter from the seafront postman. I wrote down the client's location on your. Okay. And on the way back, we take the board too, so it'll be really nice and quick.
Oh, I thought I went in. Yeah, I guess I did have to activate it through her. Weird. The woman from the lighthouse has passed. Figured this that would be oh, that would do that. Oh, oh my god, I'm tongue twisted. I figured that's what this would be about. Ah. We found her in bed. She looked happy. So I guess you didn't tell her, huh? Um now we did. Actually, I told her the truth. Thank you. I think you did right. Hard to believe she's gone. I always figured the old girl would outlive me. I hope our plan was right. I hope it made her happy in the end. Oh, it did. And that was it. Nothing. It's quest complete, but nothing did for it. The right thing? It kind of makes sense. And was she happy? I do not know. None can say what true happiness is. Humans, and perhaps even magical toads, are far more uncertain creatures than we know. Yeah, I guess. We got the lead. You sell. Hope to see you again. Do any of you sell hides? You might. Where are you? My weapons, man. Oh, you're a weapon shop? Thank you, Mark. Oh, wait, I have a ton of money now. How the hell did that happen? Hey, did you find my sweet dumpling? We didn't, but we got this off a of shade. So our fears were correct. Oh God, how could this happen to her? <laughs> this is all my fault. Um, why? If I may, my good man, why did your wife leave home in the first place? <laughs> it's because, because I, <laughs> I think we should give him some time to himself, Vice. Nani, I'm home. Good heavens, you're alive. Oh, wow, she's alive. What's wrong? Dumpling, you're not dead. What in the world are you talking about? Oh, oh, you found my bag. Thank you so much. I can't believe I went and dropped it like that. Oh, this is such a relief. Okay, seriously, what's going on? Yeah, it's tripping. I see. So. He found a shade with my bag and assumed I'd been attacked and killed? I'm just glad you're safe, Dumpling. But I'm also so sorry. This is all my fault. Oh, if I didn't eat that apple you were saving. Oh, God, I'm such an idiot! Listen, I promise I'll never eat anything of yours again. You just promise never to run away from home again, okay? Run away? Have you lost your mind? I just went to visit my parents. This guy is dumb. Uh -huh. I told you about this. Going to see my family, gone for a week. <laughs> Remember? Ugh, are you serious right now? Why don't you ever listen to me? Um, Vlad, my brilliant intuition suggests we should beat a hasty retreat from these two with all speed. Um, stick around and listen. I 
can't believe you didn't listen to me. And you ate my apple. You are the absolute worst. What? Oh, like you're some perfect angel. You didn't even care enough about our anniversary to hang on to your bag. You, kid, I'm right about this, yeah? If anyone's wrong here, it's my wife, right? Uh, maybe we should have walked away. Wait, you're asking me? Because now we're getting involved. Who's in the wrong here? The husband. Well, you shouldn't have eaten your wife's apple. That's not very nice. But I was hungry, and it was just sitting there. Look, I'm glad you went looking for my wife and all, but that was low, friend. Low. Did I cross a line there? Besides, it's pretty rich to come after me for an apple when you threw away my entire stamp collection. Ha! You're damn right I did. And I'd do it again. You are nothing but a hoarding slob. You there. My husband's in the wrong here, isn't he? Pardon, but madam, I... Um... Oh, God. Uh... Both of them. Oh, enough. The both of you are at fault. Now apologize to one another and end this ridiculous display. Talk for a floating magazine. I see you finally agree on something. <laughs> One hour later. Do you not even understand how frustrating this is, you colossal oaf? This is exactly what I hate about you. Fine, hate me! I'll still sleep like a baby knowing I'm not an unreasonable hag like you! Vice, what do I do? You turn on your heel and walk away as fast as your legs can carry you, my good lad. That's it! I have had enough! Instead of belittling me, why don't you get a proper job? Everyone in the neighborhood treats me like dirt, and it's all because of my unemployed I mean, technically. husband! He's not unemployed. He's just not doing his damn job. Uh, actually, it's just lazy. I have a job now. Wait, you what? You're kidding. Why didn't you tell me? <laughs> That's great. Well, I sort of wanted it to be <laughs> a surprise. Oh, you big silly Billy. Well, this silly Billy. A celebration. Come on, I'm going to bake you a nice apple pie. Well then. I have no idea what just transpired, but it has utterly exhausted me. Well, looks like they made up, so all's well that ends well. In the course of all that madness, I have forgotten why we even came here in the first place. Oh, heck, the canal! We need to ask him about the canal! I can't thank you enough for all your help. Uh, sure, but listen, we need to talk to you about the canal. Oh, right! That's why you came here in the first place, huh? Well, now that my love life is rolling in clover again, I'd be more than happy to get going on the canal work. Cool. All right, well, that's that. I guess, um, this was exhausting. Tell me about it. Back to Popola. Anyway, let's go give Popola an update. 